Do you have any more Eddie Guerrero stories? I watched your match recently with Eddie, and it was a great match. Um, what was that match like? And so any fun stories you haven't shared or any good Eddie stories in general? I mean, every time I go to Phoenix, I go to visit Eddie at his uh, his grave there um, near Scottsdale. Um, and I also visit Don LaPree, who's in the same cemetery, not too far away. Don LaPree being one of my one of my heroes for other reasons. But no, Eddie was just always. He was a guy who, uh, not so much when Brian and I were teaming, but usually, you know, when I was by myself, he was a guy that was, he was my locker room leader. Let's just put it that way. And it helped me immensely. You know, I'd been, I had done tags against him and Chavo, uh, teaming with Ray, uh, at, you know, international house shows. Um, and he just, Never had a crossword, at least not with me. I'd seen him blow up on people before. But, you know, he was always very, uh, very kind with me and helpful, extremely helpful. So that match, that was very, it was, I've said it before, but like that was the most, that was the easiest nerve wracking match I've ever had <laughs> because, you know, you're working one of your heroes. And it's on, and it's for TV. And you have two. I think we had two segments. And uh, normally, the TV you're going to try and get as exact as you can with everything that you're doing because they want to know where to get the cameras and like make sure you don't miss anything. And we didn't, we didn't call really a whole lot. That's where I learned. And it was through Eddie, but that's really, really, really where it hammered into my head how to work more organically and presenting yourself with a set of maybes. And that's that's how I work to this day. I don't want to plan everything because it's lifeless. And you're assuming what the audience is going to respond to. And I just... I think that's like being charged to build a roof and you decide to take your hammer and nails and shingle. You decide to like, no, nah, I don't need any of this stuff. I can do it with my hands. And so I just feel like you're really limiting yourself when you plan everything. It's, it's crap. It's unwatchable wrestling. And I, that's the big reason I was mentioning the Tony thing earlier. It's just like, it's to me, that's just unwatchable. I want to, I want to at least believe that, that what I'm, as much of what I'm seeing is actually happening and that there's emotion involved. And when you over plan your match, even if you plan your emotion into what you're doing, which is, idiotic it's going to come off very generic and it's going to come off very stale because it is you've already done it you've planned your you've planned your reaction um whereas if you leave openings in your work for whatever happens to just happen based on what you're feeling and possibly, you know, and what the audience is giving you and, and, and trusting your instincts to tell the, to, to write the story as you're, as you're going, that's the most fun way to go. And that was really the first time I got put in the fire in that situation, because normally you, you'd be kind of going over, parts of the match and everything whereas he was like hey if i uh if you come running at me and uh could you take tilt world backbreaker i was like yeah what do you want to do that he was like i don't know i don't know just just want to see if you could do it i was like yeah and then he was like if you were to go up top like if i you know like a moonsault and uh 
if I take your legs out, like, are you cool with that? I was like, yeah, do you want to do that? And he was like, I don't know where, I don't know. We probably may not even do it. I don't know. And that now it's how we put this match together was a lot of him asking me if we did something kind of like this, how would you, you know, would, could you do there? Would that work? You know, and it was so cool. I mean, it was just, it, it, it changed my, it really changed my work. Um, because then I was, at the mat, you know, as we're getting close to go on, where I would normally be like, oh, do I have everything? I didn't have to have much of anything because all we had was the finish. Um, and then we had kind of just really talked about a bunch of maybes. And so that, that's why, and he's talking to me during, you know, he's, He's he's orchestrating the whole thing. So he's like directing, doing the score, and he's playing the leading man. You know, he's it, it, just phenomenal. Um, what was the reaction so, backstage after that match, uh, Paul? Do you remember? I mean, it was whatever it was, it was all absorbed to him. Uh, I think, you know, Dean was very happy with it. The Cruiserweights kind of ended up getting a pocket of the same producers, which is usually like Fit, Dean, Kern, Steamboat, Gorilla, Slaughter, IRS. Very rarely to never got Pat Patterson. Very rarely to never got Arn Anderson. The match I had with Brock in my debut, that was Arn agenting that. But usually he didn't, they were doing the mid to upper card stuff, main event stuff. Michael Hayes, they were all doing the upper card main event stuff. So that pocket of agents minus uh, emotionless IRS, um, they were all very, very thrilled with it, you know, and but the match wasn't the match was designed, you know, to further Eddie's storyline. It wasn't to uh, bust me out and you know whatever. That was my follow up. Actually, was that match from him interrupting a match that I had with Akio, Jimmy Wang Yang, where Eddie comes out and starts cutting a promo during our match and I think I drop kick Jimmy and he falls out and hits or or he gets in the ring. Yeah, he gets in the ring and starts cutting a promo and we're like wrestling around him while he's <laughs> in the ring. And then I like drop kick Jimmy and he he hits Eddie and he's like you see this is what I'm talking about. No respect or something he like beats up Jimmy and like posts him. And then I come and turn him around, and he kicks me and throws me out, and I land on my feet, and I come back in, and he hits me and throws me back out, and then I come back in, and it's like, fuck you, and I start blocking him and hitting him, and then we do something, and he fucking stops me and literally gives me a big boost, and and so I was the splat, but, like, you know, that was – I was cruiserweight champion at the time, so, like, that gave me a, a, some decent fight, you know. Uh, and then we had the return match, I think, the next week. And so that was a cool little thing. I mean, that was, that was cool, man. It was really neat, really – uh. It's very humbling, but also just, you know, surreal when I think I'm like, man, I've been in the ring with some pretty amazing people. I'm extremely lucky for the mentors I've had yeah. and the experiences I've had. Um, you know, I'm in like overtime on this dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not great.